China is about to launch the final missions that will complete its three-module Tiangong space station, which it intends to keep occupied for at least a decade. A Long March 5B rocket is being assembled and tested at the Wenchang Satellite Launch Center on Hainan's southernmost island. The 849 metric ton rocket is scheduled to launch the Tiangong space station's third and final module at the end of October. First up, when will the rocket be launched? Mengtian, which means dreaming of the heavens, is a 17.9 meter long, 4.2 meter diameter, 22 ton module designed to host a variety of scientific experiments in fields such as fluid physics, combustion and material science, and space technologies. According to China's human spaceflight agency CMSA, the module was fueled for launch on October 9th. Mengtian will meet up and dock with Tiangong after being launched into orbit by the Long March 5B first stage, joining two earlier modules in orbit, the Tian'e core module and the Wentian experiment module, to complete the Tiangong space station. Wentian, which was launched in July, was moved from Tianhe's forward docking port to the starboard port on September 30th to make way for Mengtian's arrival. The new module will dock with the forward port and be transferred to the port docking ring, completing the T-shaped Tiangong space station. After that, the crew of the ongoing Shenzhou 4 crewed mission will most likely conduct an EVA to assess Mengtian and set up equipment. Meanwhile, on October 11th, a Long March 7 rocket arrived in Wangcheng and will be assembled to launch the Tianzhou 5 cargo mission. The launch could happen in the first half of November. Tianzhou 5 will be the fourth cargo mission to Tiangong, delivering supplies for the upcoming crewed missions Shenzhou 15. Before that, Tianzhu 4, which supplied Shenzhou 14, will deorbit from Tiangong to make way for Tianzhu 5. Meanwhile, at the Jiquan Satellite Launch Center in the Gobi Desert, a Long March 2F and the Shenzhou 15 crew spacecraft are being prepared for launch as soon as late November. In the event of an emergency in orbit, the pair has been placed on standby for launch to Tiangong. In an emergency, it would take 8.5 days to prepare for launch. When the Shenzhou 15 crew arrives in Tiangong, they will be greeted by the Shenzhou 14 astronauts, and this will be the first direct crew handover in China. Shenzhou 14's return to Earth days later will bring the space station's construction phase to a close just over 30 years after the project was authorized. Don't go anywhere, we're going to discuss China sending a mission to Ceres. Moving on, will it give the ISS competition? According to Mario Barovitz, an associate professor at Georgia Institute of Technology, China's completion of the Tiangong space station will mark a significant achievement, both as an outstanding scientific win and for demonstrating its space capabilities compared to the United States. With the completion of its modular space station, China now has a capability comparable to that of the International Space Station, according to Barovitz. Furthermore, China's space station is newer and more likely to outlast the International Space Station, which is scheduled to be retired in 2030, providing China with greater stability in its low Earth orbit activities. He went on to say that China has asserted on multiple occasions they encourage international engagement related to their station, so it will be exciting to see if any such engagement takes place now that the station is complete. China plans to keep the space station completely occupied for at least a decade to gain human spaceflight expertise, conduct a variety of experiments, and potentially explore commercial opportunities. The Shintian Optical Module, a Hubble-class space survey telescope in co-orbit, is scheduled to launch in late 2023 or 2024. For maintenance and repairs, Shintian will be able to dock with Tiangong. According to Chinese space officials, the space station itself could be expanded from three to six modules. Such an expansion could be contingent on other countries joining the venture. Next up, China considering a mission to Ceres. The Chinese Academy of Sciences is exploring missions such as a Ceres orbiter and a massive telescope to investigate the nature of dark matter. More than 20 applicants are now being evaluated for financing for further research under the Chinese Academy of Sciences CAS Strategic Priority Program on Space Science SPP, commonly known as the New Horizon Program. In the second half of 2022, the National Space Science Center, or the NSSC in Beijing, is anticipated to convene a panel of specialists to assess this pre-phase, candidates, and provide project priority recommendations. The chosen missions might then be studied further and perhaps evolved into missions during the next decade. A few of the mission concepts are mentioned in a study issued in the Chinese Journal of Space Science on the status of the third round of SPP mission selection. A very large area gamma ray space telescope, VLAST, a space weather program, the Ceres Expedition, and a gravity experimental satellite are among them. Exoplanets, heliophysics, planetary science, earth science, space life, and basic physics are among the topics addressed in the proposals. Most of the missions have little specifics at this stage. However, the Ceres and VLAST missions look to be more specified. The Ceres concept is considered to be an orbiter with a ground-penetrating radar as the primary payload, concentrating on the origin of Ceres and its subsurface ocean and volcanic geological activity. To date, the only spacecraft that has visited Ceres is NASA's Dawn mission, which was authorized under the Discovery 
program and launched in 2007. Ceres is identified as an ocean world with continuing geological activity that might be evaluated further for habitability. The mission might yield fresh insights in these areas, contributing to a better comprehension of Ceres and, by extension, ocean worlds and volatiles throughout the solar system. Finally, the Large Dark Matter Space Telescope. Astronomers think dark matter must exist to provide the gravitational pull that holds galaxies and clusters together. When dark matter particles collide, they potentially disintegrate or destroy one another, emitting gamma rays that may be seen with telescopes. Following on from the DAMPE mission, VLAST would endeavor to identify dark matter signatures in gamma ray emissions. It would also undertake gamma ray astronomy in the mega and giga electron volt ranges, as well as cosmic ray observations. According to an article published in Acta Astronomica Seneca in May this year, VLAST is predicted to boost the resolution of the Fermi Large Area Telescope by a factor of 10. A Long March 5 rocket would be required to launch the roughly 16 metric ton observatory. VLAST will also look into hot subjects in high energy astrophysics, such as gamma ray bursts, X ray binary stars, cosmic ray origins, and the quest for dark matter. VLAST will contain three types of detectors according to its early design. They distinguish gamma ray photons from other particles entering the telescope, then precisely calculate their energy and trajectory. The sensors might weigh up to 16 tons, which is more than the weight of a standard space telescope. Collider, direct, and indirect detection are the three primary strategies for searching for dark matter. With its first dark matter probe, the Dark Matter Particle Explorer, also known as Wukong or the Monkey King, China is already pursuing the third path. It's now been in low orbit for more than six years. As part of the SPP-3 series of missions, the CAS is currently examining 13 missions for possible execution between 2025 and 2030. Five to seven missions will be chosen from among the contenders in the domains of space astronomy and astrophysics, exoplanets, heliophysics, and planetary and Earth science, a Venus orbiter and astronomy constellation in lunar orbit, exoplanet search missions, ocean and climate missions, and solar observatories are all potential candidates. According to the journal report, SPP-3 is an effective way to promote China's space operations and make important contributions to international space science and exploration. The launch of the New Horizons program demonstrates that China is planning to construct medium-class missions in addition to the flagship Shanghai Lunar and Tianwen Deep Space missions, and it may expand its deep space exploration based on mission selection. The intended CAS missions are also distinct from and complementary to the Shanghai and Tianwen missions, which are officially overseen by the China National Space Administration, or the CNSA. Tianwen-1 is scheduled to launch in 2020, carrying an orbiter and rover to Mars. Tianwen-2 will be a joint near-Earth asteroid collection and comet rendezvous mission that will launch in 2025, while Tianwen-3 will launch in 2028 and aim to gather samples from Mars and transport them to Earth. Tianwen-4 will send two spacecraft to Jupiter in 2030. As one uses a gravity assist to move toward a flyby of Uranus, the other will use it to explore the Jovian system and reach orbit around Callisto. SPP-3 builds on the previous Strategic Priority Program on Space Science, which saw the launch of the DAMPE, the HXMT, the Shijian-10, and Quantum Experiments and Space Scale QUESS missions between 2015 and 2017. The SPP-2 missions include the Einstein probe, which will launch next year, the Electromagnetic Counterpart All-Sky Monitor, or the GECAM, which will launch in 2020, the Advanced Space-Based Solar Observatory, or the ASOS, which will launch this year, and the Solar Wind Magnetosphere Ionosphere Link Explorer, or the SMILE, which will launch in collaboration with the European Space Agency. That's a wrap for this video. Let us know in the comments below if you think China's station will outpace the ISS. Don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up. Thank you for watching.